thank you all so much for coming. I really appreciate it. I know this is tight quarters. I'm Mary Ann Cohen. I'm the director of the chamber, the Wakefield Linfield Chamber of Commerce. Um, we weren't expecting such a wonderful crowd, so I, I apologize for the tight quarters, but um, now that you're seated, just stay seated. <laughs> um, so we would are, are looking at this as our official kickoff of the Wakefield Linfield Chamber of Commerce. We, it's going to be a great event with both town administrators, Steve Mayo and Jim Boudreau, and they're going to be giving an update about the business community in both towns. I'd like to thank our sponsors for this morning, the Savings Bank, First Financial Trust, and the Wakefield Cooperative Bank. We really appreciate their support. We do have a lot of upcoming events. I'm not going to go through them all, but if you check our website, they're all listed on the calendar. We have some great events, including the Blossoms at the BB Library on April 30th. The theme this year is Caribbean Nights which is going to be wonderful. We have our Tri-Town Golf Tournament, and we do that with the Stoneham Chamber. We have um, our monthly Young Professionals Networking Group, and everyone's thinking young professionals. We like seasoned professionals there, too, because the young professionals like to network with, you know, the seasoned ones. Um, we have our... Um, <laughs> So just think about that. And you can decide, you can decide wh who is young and who is not. We do not card at the door. Um, if there's any programs or seminars you'd like the chamber to do, please let me know. Or consider hosting a before work breakfast or a business after hours. We'd love to spread the wealth. We do have a lot of our directors here, and I would just like to read through the list of who is here. Suzanne Bowering, Al Turco, Janice Casoli, Joyce Grasso, Tom Mullen, Sarah McDonald, Lori Hunt, Bernie Starr, Dave D'Onofrio, Tanya Longi, Bob Sardella, Pat Bruno, Cheryl Carroll, Bob Whalen, Ann Hadley, Sharon, Sharon Gilley's not here yet, Chris Barrett, and Bob DeBell is not here yet. Um, so thank you to the board. Unfortunately, the rest of our board could not be here, but thank you to the board that is here for your support and help in doing this. And last, I'd like to recognize Representative Donald Wong, who joined us this morning as well. So without further ado, um, I'd like to turn it over to Steve Mayo, the Town Administrator for Wakefield. Thank you. In any event, I do want to thank you for um, letting us uh, come here and talk to you this morning. Uh, it's always a pleasure to come here and into Linfield and you know today the uh, body cavity search only lasted so long as I came across the border. I told them I know Jim Boudreau and they went easy on me and hopefully they'll let me back. Um, but any event, um, you know when I, when I came I was thinking what am I going to talk about? I've talked to the Wakefield Chamber a number of times. And I thought I'd talk about there are similarities between our two towns and uh, how we can maybe draw on that and uh, move things forward. So. Before I start, I'd thank Mark O'Malley. Give him a big hand. One of my IT guys who set me all up. So if this doesn't work, it's all his fault. But I'm sure it will. So anyways, can anybody see this? I'll step back a little bit while I talk. Um, one of these things that we do share is we do share a trade area. And uh, Wakefield has re recently, through the Board of Select and Selectmen, uh, commissioned kind of a study of uh, market assessment of, uh, of Wakefield. But within it, we looked out in our borders of downtown Wakefield and what is within a three-mile radius. And if you look here, this nice this, uh, area right here with the star and the, and the uh, square around it is Market Street. So let's, let's talk about what we share in common, okay? Within that three-mile radius, there's 86,000 people, okay? Big marketplace for both of us to tap into, both communities. Um, the median income is about 88,000 per household and with the average income being 108,000. So there is, this is a fairly affluent community that, again, is a market potential for all of us. Um, this, in fact, this group here that lives within this three mile radius, which goes around like that, uh, they spend close to $1.2 billion a year. Let's think about that for a minute. $1.2 billion a year in restaurants and, uh, and retail stores and what have you. That's what they spend. So that doesn't count people coming outside and coming in. But interestingly enough, of that $1.2 billion a year that they spend, $350 million of it, or close to $350 million, is spent outside of the area. What we call that, or I learned we call that sales leakage through the, the process that we're going through. 
So the question is, how can we help our business capture that? Uh, we've got to work a little harder in Wakefield, I agree, because we don't have Market Street. But um, I do want to thank you all in Linfield, uh, the, the builders, I don't see anybody from National Development here, for emulating downtown Wakefield. And this is where Pat Bruno knows I stole a lot of this, but that's okay. This is a picture of um, Market Street, okay? Um, notice you have the angle parking, you have the stores in the background. I had to go there at around 2 in the morning to show that there was only one shopper there, but <laughs> it was uh, a cold day anyway. And on that same cold day, um, I went to downtown Wakefield. Fairly similar. Angle parking. Um, if you look way in the back, there is one shopper down there, way over there. Um, just by chance, I thought that was pretty good. Uh, it took me four days, no. And you can see the uh, angle parking and the trees and things that, uh, that we're all trying to do. So I really like the fact that we are really emulating each other. We're trying to create that downtown atmosphere, which is what Market Street is doing, which is what downtown Wakefield is, is doing and trying to do. So we've been working on this for a while in Wakefield, and how do we enhance the business cl climate there? How do we help people? And we actually have a, um, a, uh, a, a, a plan in to get some bond money that Donald was very uh, instrumental in getting us into the uh, economic bond bill. We've got to pull it out. But Donald got it there for us, and I thank you very much, Donald. How can we enhance our um, quality of life downtown? And you notice that this, you know, in extending the Center Island Strip, uh, making it more walkable, which is what we talk about, is that people like to walk, <coughs> and people are afraid to cross large streets. And if you, if you bring this back to Market Street, okay, you notice that you have a Center Island, you have bump outs, you have ways to get across. So really what we're trying to do is create that nice downtown atmosphere. So in my old economic days, I'm an economic major, for those of you who don't know, um, anytime there's more comparison shopping, anytime there's more uh, uh, companies coming in or, or retail businesses or businesses coming in, my, my philosophy was, and uh, I learned this from my old professor Chowdhury um, at Georgetown University, that it, it raises all boats. So you get more people and more comparison and more people come in. It's also called bunching. And think about it when you say, why did McDonald's go to China? Well, then Kentucky Fried Chicken went and Burger King because of bunching, because it's, it's you know, the, the, there's the businesses there and they all feed off each other. So what can we do in Wakefield? I'll talk a little about what, what we're looking at in Wakefield and we'll turn it over to Linfield. Um, Wakefield uh, for years had a uh, building, I think it was an old post office built in the 20s that the light department used as their uh, executive offices in Bilping. That building has been taken over or retaken over by the Board of Selectmen. And we are thinking about what we're going to do with this. And we're really thinking about using this as a, as a cultural center, as an arts center, as something that will draw people into the, our downtown that's a little bit different than going to um, a restaurant you know, solely. We're thinking that if we bring in some cultural and some arts and what have you, uh, that will probably enhance the experience of downtown. Then with the walkability, maybe people will walk and go to some of our restaurants or retail shops. So that's what we're looking at in Wakefield. In fact, a committee has been established by the Board of Selectmen. It's a five-member committee, and we're already looking at some enhancements that we can do there um, to bring this to up, to up to what we need to do. We need some handicapped accessibility, so Donald will be looking to you for more stuff for that. Just warning you, okay? Fear warning. Thank so, you. You're welcome. I know. So the other thing that we've done is Wakefield, we have made some zoning changes. And our thoughts are that, and, and it's a, it's a well-tested planning tool, is to increase density in your downtown area and increasing that by encouraging residential above retail, okay? We, and particularly near the train station. Uh, we have a commuter rail in Wakefield and it's right down on that Albion Street corridor. And the thought is that with the cultural component, with increased um, residential units above, and there are some wonderful buildings on, in Wakefield um, that really just need a little bit of help and probably can be reused in their current state or added on top to create more people downtown and what have you. So we can, uh, we've been working on that. It just passed town meeting and um, hopefully that's going to give the impetus of what we need. And in fact, we just had a major filing of a new development on uh, North Ave between Armory and Armory and what's Richardson? Westwater. Westwater. Armory and Westwater. Thank you. My town engineer is there. He knows all the streets by name. Michael Collins. Thank you. And that is going to be 
uh, retail, and then uh, some condo units above there, right across the street from the train. The thought is people will go to the train, go to work. Uh, I've, I've encouraged them to have bike, um, rent, rental bikes there, like in Boston, things like that. So that is something that we're, we're hoping to move on. And they just filed in part because this helped them out a little bit, the zoning change. Happy with that. So in keeping with our cultural theme, and this is where I little go a little bit off the rails, um, what can we do to enhance that business? And there's some small things that we can do, and I think this is where the chamber comes in. And promoting walkability, promoting uh, fun, I guess, getting people in the business. This is a, a quiet, just a pedestrian area only that they have. Maybe this could be the rail trail as people leave Wakefield, Yahoo, they're coming to Linfield. You know, some balloonage or what have you. It's, it's really nice. My favorite, uh, and I took this photo myself early in the morning. Um, this is the Suzanne Bowering. Where is Suzanne? Suzanne Bowering uh, owns Holiday Travel in Wakefield and set up the most fantastic trip our family ever took, um, which was a trip to Ireland, and, and we all went there together, um, ages from 20 to 50-something. And, uh, <laughs> and the 20-year-old loved it because he was all legal everywhere. So this is a street, <laughs> or so he said, this is a street in Killarney. And you can notice what they do, which I think is really cool, is that they had a bike race the week before, so they have the bikes up above, so they're really trying to enhance and pull that whole community together. And what they say about uh, Killarney is if you don't like the music in the uh, pub that you're in, walk next door. Maybe like it there, because all of them have music, and all of them have music projected out into the street to draw you in. So you can think about what can be done with entertainment and, you know, kind of the fun thing like that. I know that uh, uh, Selectman Dinaco is not there here today uh, from Wakefield. He loves hanging things above plans, so maybe those are some <laughs> things that are, are going to happen. I was hoping he'd be here for that. This is what, St. Catherine Street in um, Montreal, so you can kind of see that whole thing, that pedestrian area drawing people in. And these are dreams, but I think there's something we can do with our Albion Street corridor. Um, Jim asked me about this one when we are putting it together, the Umbrella Street. It never rains in Wakefield, so we don't need the umbrellas, but uh, I think this is in Germany. Oh, Portugal. This one is in Portugal, the, um, the Umbrella Street. Um, but again, enhancing that that walkability, enhancing that experience, because one thing we're talking about is that people love to have an experience. And that's why they love going to Market Street, as I do. You can do a little bit of shopping. Uh, when I go to my wife, way more shopping than I want to do. I'll meet you at Davio's, or I guess the gas light is good now. Meet her there. Um, so, but I think that experience, and that's what we need to do. We need to get people. I think people are going away from the big indoor malls. The experience is walkability, um, maybe some boutique retail that we need to work on and bringing more people downtown. Uh, here's that Umbrella Street. Oh, again, this one is in Germany. I guess they like umbrellas in both places. And my favorite, I know it looks like the North End in, <laughs> during Christmas time, but I kind of like this. So these are kind of things that we're going we're gonna to look at. And uh, in Wakefield, we're lucky to have our Municipal Light Department, so we can be working with them to, to help uh, do things like this. So we're looking at um, some zoning changes that we've made to increase density. Hopefully that helps all of your businesses in the downtown. Um, we're looking to increase the uh, health of pedestrian experience, and that's going to take some work. Uh, it's going to take some construction, unfortunately, to get there. We have some of that in the bond bill. Uh, luckily, we're doing a lot of improvements right now uh, through the light department, through the electricity and gas that is actually going to enhance all those businesses in the downtown that uh, decades, right? Um, Gene Sullivan, Peter, decades, they can't even handle the enhancement of their properties because of the power that's coming in. That's being handled in a lot of those areas like right now. And it's tough. I get it. It's bad during the construction. Could be a lot worse, but we're, we're working on that, and the end product will be very good. So that's what we're looking at in Wakefield. Um, but we would like to see, or what I'd like to see, how do we bring this together to both communities? And I think that if we can increase the cultural component down here, the arts and the music, perhaps, perhaps we can do some work um, up in some cross-selling between that and Market Street, maybe some shuttles and what have you that we can work people back and forth. I know we've been talking to the uh, Linfield, uh, Wakefield Linfield Hotel, which luckily is in Wakefield, so I get the, uh, I get the uh, occupancy tax on that one, so we won't make that trade either, Jim. Um, and um, trying to get people shuttle them to the downtown to use our restaurants and what have you. So that's what we're doing in, in Wakefield, uh, and we hope to partner with Linfield through this. So I think that's it for me. So I guess I'll put it back to the beginning, and if Jim wants to play with that, he certainly can. Thank you.
Thank you. Good morning. Steve is much more accomplished on TV than I am. Uh, when he sent me that PowerPoint the other day, I spent the entire day driving around Wakefield looking for the Umbrella Street. <laughs> and he goes, oh, it's in Germany. I'm like, oh, you should have told me that before I spent the day driving around. But good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Linfield. Welcome to our historic meeting house on our town green. That's a beautiful facility. Uh, we have events here. This is available for anybody who wants to rent it. You can talk to our historic society. Uh, we have functions here, and it's really the focal point of our community. So welcome to Linfield. Welcome to the chamber. Uh, in my former life in Norwell, I found that the Norwell Hanover Chamber of Commerce was an excellent vehicle for me to come meet with the business community, to talk to you in a group. But more important, I don't want you to listen to me tell you what's good for business. I want you to talk to me and tell me what you need from the town to make it a more welcoming place, a more convenient place for business to operate. Uh, I want to introduce Tom Terranova, the Vice Chair of our Board of Selectmen. He is here this morning. We have a unique situation here in Norwell for the small business community in that the Chairman and the Vice Chairman of the Board of Selectmen are both small business owners. Tom owns a business in Danvers. Mr. Crawford, the Chairman, owns a business in Boston. So when we make decisions that affect the business community, they are very much aware of how those decisions affect you, the small business owner, because they're small business owners. They make payroll, they pay taxes, they deal with zoning. So it's kind of a unique situation here in that they are very much aware of what we do and how it affects you. They're also very aware that we get a lot more than taxes from the business community. It's the business community that buys the ads in the high school newspapers. It's the business community that supports the little league teams and the soccer teams and all those things. So we need to be cognizant of what you do, how you do it, and again, make decisions that help you thrive in our community. Now, Representative Wong, the legislation that Steve filed to move the town line to put Market Street in Wakefield, <laughs> Linfield is going to oppose that. I want to tell you that right off the, right off the bat. Um, so, but we're, we're very glad to have you come to Market Street. Uh, we are enjoying the tax revenue that we're getting from our meals tax from you people. Uh, that is really a project that shows what can happen when the business community, the municipality, and the state work together to design a project that works for everybody. Uh, one exciting announcement, I don't know if you've seen it yet, uh, we are pleased to say that uh, there will be a new addition at Market Street coming hopefully shortly. Uh, we talked about it for several months. All they tell us was there was a fruit store that they were working with, but they couldn't tell us who it was. Uh, and I'm like, a, a fruit store? You got Whole Foods. What do you need a fruit store for? It makes no sense to me. Uh, but we are getting an Apple facility uh, at Market Street. Uh, it'll be right across from the Common and the Skating Center. And it will be one of only two design. It'll be a complete open concept with full glass walls. And uh, the only other one like it is in California. So we are very excited to bring that up to Market Street. Um, we think it will really in, impact the foot traffic and who's shopping there. And also, you've probably already seen Gaslight is open, and we are anticipating California Pizza Kitchen will open in the spring. So come on up. Uh, the meals tax, we love it. We are actually using the meals tax to support uh, a just completed $8 million field project in town, up at the high school and around town, five synthetic turf fields. An amenities building, it's absolutely magnificent, and we're doing repair work on the rest of our fields. And those bonds are being supported by the meals tax revenue that we're bringing in from Market Street and the other businesses. Some of the things we're working on that will be of interest to the business community, uh, I'm sure most of you have heard that the center over here has been sold. Uh, we are also in the process of doing an MAPC, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council is doing a study of the traffic and the traffic patterns here in the center. Uh, we're excited to talk to the new developer. We've reached out to him. We haven't touched base with him yet, but to see what his plans are for our center business district. It is small, but it's very vibrant. Uh, we'd like to work with him to see what we can do to make it even better. Um, Mr. Kimball's not here today. He owns the law office across the street. He's very up to date on the traffic that points right at his building every night and shines lights in his house. Uh, but we're working on the traffic. Traffic is a big issue here in town. So the zoning board, the planning board, is going to be interested to hear from businesses as to what we can do to clean up our zoning bylaws, change our zoning bylaws, because that's a project we're going to start in the spring. We're going to take a comprehensive look at our zoning to clean them up, to make them more understandable. So we're going to want to hear from the business community as to what we can do to our zoning to change how we do things. Usually what I hear is, 
make it clear. We don't want special permits. We don't want special licenses. Tell us what we can do. Tell us what we can't do. And it makes it a lot cleaner than having to go to some other board and say, well, what if I wanted to? That's going to be a very crucial piece for us going forward to make this a more welcoming community for the business. What else do I want to talk about? The other big thing we have going on down at Market Street that is not actually Market Street, if you go around the back where the housing is to the right is the King Rail Golf Course. That is a nine-hole golf course that is actually owned by the town of Linfield. Uh, we anticipate that that will be open this spring. It is going to be a fantastic little course. Uh, we will be looking for money at the spring town meeting to build a small clubhouse. Obviously, we're not going to build a function facility there and try to compete with Market Street right up the driveway. But that's going to be a great little golf course. Uh, maybe in a couple years, the chamber can have their, their golf outing there. Um, I'll be happy to play in the, the golf outing. Uh, I'm not sure you want me to if you saw how I played golf. But uh, when we open uh, King Rail, I am going to hit the ceremonial first ball into the water hazard on the first hole. <laughs> Anybody wants to come down and watch it, it should be interesting and funny. Uh, the other big thing I want to communicate today, again, without getting into specifics, uh, my door is open. I want to hear from you. That's why I'm here today. I will attend as many of these as I can. I want to hear from you if you have a problem, if you have an issue, if you have a pothole, if you have something that we can help you out with, reach out to me. I can get it to the right people, and we can try to make sure that it, it gets taken care of. The other thing I want to emphasize today, um, Steve does do a stand-up at Prince's on Wednesday nights, if you want to go see Steve. It's pretty good. Uh, but the towns of Wakefield and Linfield, Steve and I work very closely together. Uh, the towns actually already share a permitting department. We share our building, wiring, and gas inspectors. Uh, we're working on the rail trail project. Uh, we're, we're trying to work out how we're going to let people from Wakefield in, what the screening's going to be, and things like that. Uh, Steve does have to be out of here by 9 o'clock, or he will be arrested. It's just, just the way things work. Uh, but we work very closely together. I understand if you look at where our businesses are located in Linfield, Market Street, and our Salem Street business district abuts Wakefield. Uh, so the issues that we're dealing with are the issues that Steve's dealing with. And again, as he said, the more business we can bring, the more reasons we can get people to come to this area, the better it is for everybody. Um, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, for those of you who are boaters, I come from the South Shore, everybody uses boating and sailing analogies. It kind of bothers me after a while, but I'm in the habit now, so it kind of comes out. Uh, but we are, we are working very closely together on a lot of these issues, the traffic, the rail trail, uh, resources, sharing ideas. So if there's something we can do to help you out, again, please, the office is always open, call, and we'll make sure that your issue gets to who it needs to get to. And more importantly, we'll make sure that the answer gets back to you in as timely a fashion as we can. So thank you for having me. Uh, I, I hope to see more of you and, and meet you in person as time goes on. We're right across the street. Stop at any time and, and let me know if I can be of help. Thank you. Um, there, there's still some, definitely some time, so they are happy to answer any questions you may have. Oh, what well, happy? Well, Yes, ma'am. You know, from Linfield's perspective, it's something we'll look at. I'm not sure we have a lot of space for development on our side of the border. Uh, and one of the big issues before we do anything down there is the traffic. So we'd have to have some real conversations with the Commonwealth about <coughs> fixing the traffic in those intersections down there. But if we can do something that improves the business community and is not disadvantaged to everybody else, it's something we'll look at. And I think the zoning, the planning board is going to look at that when they look at the zoning bylaws. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think if you, um, and the question was the Salem Street corridor, whether there would be... Um, uh, more development there. If you look on the on the Wakefield side, you know we, we talk about traffic a lot because that is a concern of uh, both residential areas. You go right beyond that uh, on both sides. Um, I think that we we're, we're looking a lot towards the Audit Barn Road area, which is right off of Salem Street. I think there is going to be um, changes up there. There's a lot of properties in there that that could be developed. In Wakefield, the properties on Salem Street themselves. Um, 
they're mostly already developed, and they back up to the highway, so there's not an awful lot of room there, but I think they will be redeveloped at some point. Um, I think office building type of stuff going on like that, so yeah, I think we will be looking at that. Years ago, I came to Steve and we talked about maybe a small theater, a movie theater in downtown Lakefield. That really isn't even possible. A lot of the land has been taken up. But will there ever be a theater added to what we have on Martin Street? I'll let Mr. Town over answer that question. One of the other town admitted. on the Wakefield side? I want to raise. Uh, <laughs> In, in terms of Market Street, under the, the zoning that has been adopted for Market Street, there is no movie theater allowed at Market Street. Um, they have said that they would like to discuss that with us at some point. Whether or not that would get past town meeting, I don't know. But right now, it is not allowed at Market Street, so there wouldn't be a theater there unless we change the zoning. I mean, it, it, it could be permitted under, under zoning, take a special permit. I haven't heard any rumblings about that. Uh, we talked about a, a smaller boutique theater kind of in the downtown, and I think we even identified you and I where we thought it might be, uh, a, a place that it would work well, um, but I haven't heard from that either, no. If, if we owned more property, we could make things happen. Yes, ma'am. You, you spoke about cleaning up um bylaws to make them more understandable. Can you expound a little bit on that and perhaps offer an example of what you mean by that? I mean, that's done to the planning board, which is an elected board, but if you read our uh, zoning bylaws, you almost need to be, have a PhD or have a, a law degree in land use. They're very confusing. They're not clear for you to look at your bylaw and say, oh, I can do this, I can't do this. Uh, I think that's a lot of what the planning board wants to do so that someone reading our zoning bylaws can say, this is what I can do, this is what I can't do, not, you know, I'm going to have to hire someone who does this for a living. That's a lot of it, and then they will be looking at tweaking the bylaws or changing the bylaws based upon the comments they have to, to make things either easier or clearer to do. But a lot of stuff we want to do here in Linfield requires a special permit, and I know businesses don't like special permits because they don't know, and they would rather be able to look at the bylaw and say, yes, I can build that movie theater, no, I can't build that movie theater, and then make their decisions as opposed to, well, now I've got to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I don't know what the neighbors are going to think. They might say no. Um, so those are some of the things that the Planning Board is going to be grappling with when they do that. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, one more. In the town of Winfield, I know just recently Tank Barringer has been very helpful. Wakefield. Wakefield. Yeah. But I was just wondering, the town of Linfield, we just hired outside consultants, Peg Barringer is from... Uh, fine, po fine points. Is fine it? point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, consultants, and they did a study of obviously some of the things you saw here as far as what the capacity is, what the what the purchase power is in this particular uh, regional area. But do you hire a lot of outside consultants as well to help the town learn a little bit more about themselves without going through the local channels or without going through the local uh, government? I've only been here for a year, so I, I can't speak to historically. No, uh, no. We do use a lot of, um, we use the MAPC a lot to do a lot of that stuff, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Uh, sometimes they charge you, sometimes they don't. But we do use them a lot to do that demographic information because it is very helpful when you're trying to decide and try to bring a business in. So we did it quite a bit in, in Norwell. Uh, we had a very large office park. And when we were trying to bring someone into that office park, we would bring out the demographic information, the transportation uh, demographics. So we were actually very uh, lucky when I was there. We have the world headquarters now of Clean Harbors. That took an empty building there. Uh, we have Zildjian Symbols, which is the oldest company in the country, uh, and a couple other big businesses down there. So we would use that in our office box to try to entice businesses to come down when we had empty spaces in the office box. But the MAPC does a lot of that. Um, and uh, I think if we got to that point in, in Linfield, I would probably have the board uh, reappoint the Economic Development Committee and start having those discussions. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, um, Peg Barringer will be coming to the Board of Selectmen on the 8th to discuss the report. Um, what we did is we hired a, uh, the Board of Selectmen were uh, gracious enough to hire a 
consultant to talk about our, um, our demographics and what might work in our, in, our, in our downtown and to show that, and I, I stole that from her, that three mile radius, got a lot of the information in there. Uh, and what we've been doing with that, we've kind of looked at and we had a, a process where we had a, a number of meetings, uh, people signed up, there were a lot of chamber members there, um, there were a lot of people in the community there at the meetings, they were advertised uh, and, and what have you. Now we're working with the MAPC, taking some of that information and working with them to provide us technical assistance. In fact, uh, I have a, a draft of the grant uh, with me that uh, our town planner is working on with them to use their technical uh, assistance and, and expertise to kind of take the next step. How do we make that happen? How do we engage the community? MAPC is great about setting up meetings and getting businesses there because the businesses need to buy into this. I mean, the businesses that are active, they come to the chamber meetings, okay? Um, and often we found is that the business owners aren't the property owners. So often we need the property owners to buy in not just the business owners. And that has been, and I'll be perfectly honest, a struggle with some of them in Wakefield. Some of the property owners have not been great about working. You're looking quizzically at me, some of my friends in the chamber, but some of them are great that own the, that own the property, but some of them aren't. <laughs> um, so we've worked very uh, carefully. So we have the MAPC coming in uh, to help us work on that, on that, and a couple of other technical issues about making us more competitive. So that is, that is in the works. Uh, um, we, we certainly would, I, I would, I would love that. I will tell you that I have met one-on-one um, -on -one or sometimes three-on-one -on -one with my planner, with my building inspector. Uh, if the chamber can facilitate anything with us with getting uh, some of the business property owners in, that would be great because I look at some of them, the properties, and I see what a great location this is. There's been public improvements all around it. Uh, and they're stuck back in the 70s. And we all know the places in Wakefield, we all know, everyone's smiling and nodding their head, they all know it, and they all know that uh, we've uh, banged our head about it uh, here. So if the chamber can facilitate that, I would turn it over to the leadership, anything that the chamber leadership can help us with, or members, I'm all in. So thank you. Okay. Is it in Linfield, I hope? Because, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> so I don't understand, like, I have, a, I have a service company, I have, yeah. I have a home care agency, so I have 200 employees, that's 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 which is business trash. Um, boy, you got lucky for a long time, but uh, we do not, that is a decision the town has made, the ta town meeting has made, town only picks up residential trash. And the trash in the barrels around downtown that we do, you know, the public trash twice a week, sometimes three times, depending on usage. Did I get that right? Yeah, so sorry. I won't address the trash issue, but that's just an example of how sometimes when one town does something, it impacts another town. Uh, the town of Situa, which is next door to Norwell, went to a pay-as-you-throw trash system a couple of years ago. Uh, within six months, our tonnage had gone up significantly. Uh, we had to put locks on all the school dumpsters, uh, and we actually arrested two people that we caught multiple times. When they drove up Main Street on Wednesdays, which was trash day pickup in Norwell, they would stop at a house, put their trash by the side of the road, and, and keep driving. Um, so we had to actually arrest those. But those are some of the things yeah. now that Steve and I... Yeah, I mean, I don't even mind. I mean, I, I, I don't even mind paying for the trash with the arms and bags, but I couldn't even get them. Oh. We have a small office space and we don't have enough space for a dumpster. You know, we're not like a commercial, hmm. you know, we're not big enough for a commercial dumpster and all that stuff. So I don't, I, I couldn't yeah. pay for the arms and bags. 
All right, that's, that's something I, we'll talk with the DPW about. Maybe that's a way that we can do it. I, what, what is interesting to me and in in what happened in the trash tonnages in Wakefield is that we went to the blue barrels. Everyone knows that, the automatic arm, and you get one of those big blue barrels a week. Unlimited recycling that you could put into any sort of uh, container, and you just got a sticker on it. Uh, recycling has gone way up in Wakefield, and our tonnage has gone way down in trash, which is great for the taxpayer, uh, great for the environment. Uh, and we have not seen a lot of dumping uh, in Wakefield, every, every now and then. But I had a, uh, a, a woman call me up after the new trash uh, went in, which was a town meeting vote, by the way. And um, she said, uh, Mr. Mayo, and I said, call me Steve. She said, I want to talk about the trash, uh, new trash rules. And I said, oh, I know this is, she says, thank you so much. I said, thank you, why? She says, my kids that live in another town that has pay, pay as you throw, uh, uh, way north of here, they would come down every trash day and dump it in front of my house. And it always bothered me that Wakefield was paying for this. So I want to thank you, because now I can tell them, no, I can't. I just have this barrel. So I, I guess, you know, it's on both sides of the spectrum of track. But I'll get it. If you want to come see me, we can talk about working that out. And more, more importantly, see Carol Antonelli right here. She's, raise your hand. <laughs> and that poor woman's kids don't listen anymore. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Her choice. <laughs> In the Boston area, like for example, my office is, I have shared office space in Boston from a company called Officio. And there's Officio, WeWork, Workspace, there's a number of these types of companies that offer shared office space to small businesses like many of us here today. Has there been any attempt in either Wakefield or Linfield to report one of those businesses with respect to this area? Regis. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, in Wakefield at Edgewater Park, there is actually Regis, which is one of those shared office spaces, and they're a chamber member too. So um, it's beautiful space, state of the art, very, very nice. So. Yeah, we've also been talking with a, a place called Edgewater in Wakefield. You may remember something happened there years ago. Not so good. There was a shooting about 10, 10 years ago. Harvard Mills building, but it was Edgewater uh, Technology or something. That is a, a perfect location and almost set up that way for those cubicles and shared, and maybe you share a receptionist, uh, what have you. So we've been actually, our plan has been talking to them to talk about uh, something like that. So yeah, there is uh, an appetite for that, absolutely. And they have a great parking garage. We love parking garages, right? <laughs> we have, uh, I have not been working on that since I've been here, but we don't generally have that large office space that would be conducive to that. Most of if you get on Salem Street, most of ours are the small condominium offices. So uh, that would be almost a new development, new type of building. Uh, and probably in Linfield, something like that would be on Route 1 if we were going to see it. I don't know if we'd see it in our business district because they're not that, not that big. Manage what the businesses want versus what the uh, residents want. Very carefully. <laughs> 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 you can say whatever. I don't even know where it feels. So you can say whatever you want. But actually, <laughs> All right, then we can really say it with you. Yeah. No. <laughs> Any residents here, or y'all just businesses? <laughs> uh, it, it it is a very it is a balancing act. Uh, and again, um, that's why I think it's important, at least in Linfield, that we have two small business owners on the Board of Selectmen. Uh, because if you, speaking specifically of the tax rate, small incremental shifts in the tax rate away from the residential tax side to the business side saves very little money for the residents, but is very high for the business because we have such a large percentage of residential. We're about uh, 89, 88, 88 percent residential. So when we shift a little bit of that tax burden onto the business, it's a very small savings for the residents, but it's a very big hit on the business. So it, the only way to say it is it is a balancing act, and you have to be cognizant of what that impact is when you do it either way, when you make that shift and when you do something that favors one or the other. You have to be cognizant of the impact that it has on the other side. Um, that's about the best way yeah. I can answer it. Yeah, I think what, where we really run into the tension between the business and the uh, residential is that when they abut, because those districts will abut somewhere. You know, so you have, it, 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 it's not as if that you, you know, there's a whole big business and bang, then there's um, residential. There is going to be some 
spill over and, and what have you. And, you know, particularly people that want to live near your commercial district, they want to walk, particularly in the downtown. Downtown is business district. I mean, there are certain things uh, in the business district that happen, certain zoning things to allow businesses to work together, uh, to work and to, and to open. So those tensions are where we have the spillovers, and those are things that we try to uh, work on. And sometimes we're better than other times, but that's what we really need to focus on. So uh, the tax rate is, Wakefield has a split tax rate, has had it for years. Uh, probably 2020, I don't know, whenever it came into effect. Maybe Mr. Turco, do you remember when that? Before, before Al's time. <laughs> so, I mean, so we, we have that, that shift right now. We have a little bit of a larger business area uh, than Linfield has, uh, but not, not greatly. So that, that's already in there. So that is, a, that is consideration, too. Well, that's till 9 o'clock. Oh, quarter round. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. He gets arrested. Now. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you again. Just a couple other things I want to mention. Restaurant Week in Wakefield is coming up February 29th through March 6th. So keep checking back on the Wakefield Linfield Chamber website. We will be listing the restaurants as they sign up. Um, we're still in the process of gathering that information. Um, we are partnering with the BB Library and the town for a new resident program called Wakefield 101. We'll be hosting two events a year, and you'll hear more about that as we progress with that, but we're looking for giveaways and some sponsorships of a bag and things like that. So, um, Lastly, I'd like to thank Tom Stapleton from WCAT for being here to tape this. So thank you, Tom. <laughs> And lastly, you, t you talked about golf. Um, so we do have our Tri-Town Golf Tournament. Steve Mayo did come in <coughs> golf in, in it. So now the, uh, it's been thrown out there. Why did you say golf like that? Because I really didn't golf. No, you did golf. <laughs> okay. I don't golf. But now it's out there that if there could be a nice little rivalry between the two of you to be there in golf. So um, there's plenty of food. Please feel free to have... <laughs> As much as you want, stay in network. We've got the place. So, and thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it.